Mr. Chairman, first of all, I rise in uh, support of the uh, uh, manager's amendment. And let me begin by thanking you, Ranking Member DeFazio, Mr. Barlett, and Mr. Carson for holding this markup of the FEMA reauthorization bill. More than two years ago, Superstorm Sandy devastated New York City and communities along the East Coast. In the months since the storm hit, we have seen hurricanes, tornadoes, forest fires, droughts, and other natural disasters tear through communities across the country. These disasters have devastated communities and left hundreds of millions of dollars in damage. They've also demonstrated FEMA's critical role in the aftermath of disaster while highlighting the gaps and issues in FEMA's emergency response and in their constituents' ability to access disaster assistance. This bill goes a long way toward addressing those gaps. I'd like to thank Chairman Schuster for working with us on one provision already included in the underlying a bill. The language includes a technical correction clarifying that certain communications devices and equipment are eligible for FEMA assistance. This change will ensure that in the aftermath of a disaster, communities can continue sharing information on evacuation orders, emergency routes, <coughs> and where to find shelter, food, and services. In the aftermath of Superstorm Sandy, that information literally saved lives. I am pleased this bill will eliminate the ambiguity about the eligibility for assistance and will ensure that communications can remain fully operational in the aftermath of a natural disaster. I also thank the Chairman for including two other provisions in the Manager's Amendment to address longstanding ambiguities in eligibility for FEMA assistance, specifically for housing cooperatives, condominium associations, and community associations. Following Hurricane Sandy, I heard from countless constituents who live in co-ops and condos and were unable to access FEMA recovery grants. The Stafford Act does not include a definition of condo or co-op. This ambiguity has led to significant confusion about their eligibility for assistance and made it nearly impossible for residents of condos and co-ops to make the common areas of their buildings habitable. Under FEMA's current eligibility rules, if you live in a co-op, you may receive individual assistance to repair the interior of your apartment, but you cannot receive any assistance to fix the roof. If you live in a high-rise condo building, you can receive assistance to repair your unit, but not the elevator you need to get there. Every member of this committee probably has condos in his or her district. And community associations are even more prevalent around the country and have experienced similar roadblocks when they seek assistance. Many of these associations own and operate their own roads, canals, bridges, and water systems. In the aftermath of a disaster, the associations are not eligible for FEMA public assistance for basic essential government services like de debris removal or repair to wastewater systems. Congressman Israel, my colleague from New York, introduced a bipartisan bill of which I am a co-sponsor to address this issue, and in the FY14 Homeland Security Appropriations Bill, asked FEMA to advise Congress on the eligibility of condos and co-ops for disaster assistance, including recommendations for how Congress could change the statute to make condos and co-ops eligible. In their response, FEMA failed to provide Congress with any concrete recommendations. Their response stated only that they were, quote, exploring the program implications surrounding Stafford Act changes that would authorize FEMA, unquote, and would need to, quote, explore the challenges such a change would likely present, close quote. The manager's amendment includes language directing FEMA to update this committee on the status of those explorations and any other recommendations they have for providing FEMA assistance to condos and co-ops for common areas after disaster. This report will continue our discussions with FEMA in a constructive way. The Manager's Amendment also includes language directing FEMA to provide community associations technical assistance on how they may be eligible to receive reimbursement from FEMA or another grantee for their work in the aftermath of disasters. FEMA should provide these associations with best practices and support to ensure that they are able to rebuild and continue providing basic services after a disaster. I thank you again, Mr. Chairman and Mr. Ranking Member, for continuing to work with me on this critical issue. Uh, and I yield back the balance of my time. Uh, I thank the gentleman with that recognition.